In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the speed of sound in solids, liquids, and gases. So let's start with this problem. Estimate the speed of sound in a solid such as steel, which has an elastic modulus of 200 times 10 to the 9 pascals. So what formula do we need? The speed of sound is the square root of Young's modulus, which is the same as the elastic modulus, divided by the density of the solid. So the elastic modulus of steel is 200 times 10 to the 9 pascals, or 200 uh, gigapascals. The density of steel is 8,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So let's divide 200 times 10 to the 9 by 8,000, and then take the square root of that result. So the density, I mean, the speed of sound in steel is about 5,000 meters per second. And so it's pretty high. Now keep in mind, this is just an estimate. So the actual speed of sound is somewhere around 5,000 meters per second. It might be more or less, but this is just an estimate. Number two, estimate the speed of sound in a liquid such as water, which has a bulk modulus of 2.18 times 10 to the 9 pascals, or 2.18 gigapascals. So here's the formula that you need. So the speed of sound in the liquid is going to be the bulk modulus divided by the density. And so we have the bulk modulus. And the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And so this is going to be about 1476 meters per second. So that's an estimate. So that's the speed of sound in water. Number three, calculate the speed of sound in air at 20 degrees Celsius. The ratio of heat capacities is 1.4. Air consists of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% argon. And we're given the molar mass of these gases. What is the speed of sound at 25 as well? And there's supposed to be a question mark here. But let's focus on the first temperature at 20. So the formula that we need is this equation. It's equal to gamma times R, which is the gas constant, times the Kelvin temperature, divided by the average molar mass of air. So let's calculate this value first. We have gamma. The ratio of heat capacities, that's 1.4. And R is another constant. That's 8.3145 joules per mole per Kelvin. So the temperature has to be in Kelvin. So to convert Celsius to Kelvin, add 273 to it. So 20 plus 273 is 293 Kelvin. The last thing we need is the average molar mass. So the molar mass of nitrogen gas, if you look at the periodic table, it's going to be 14.01 times 2, or 28.02. And air is 79%, I mean 78% nitrogen. So we need to multiply that by 0.78 to calculate the average molar mass of air. Oxygen has a molar mass of 32, and air is about 21% oxygen. And argon is or has a molar mass of 40, and air consists approximately about 1% of argon. So let's put these numbers together in the calculator, and let's see what we get. So the average molar mass is about 29 grams per mole. Now we need this answer in kilograms per mole. So let's convert grams to kilograms. One kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So we need to divide this number by 1,000. So this is going to be 0 0.029 kilograms per mole. So now we have everything that we need to plug into this formula. So 
So it's going to be 1.4 times 8.3145 multiplied by a Kelvin temperature of 293 divided by the molar mass, which is in kilograms per mole. So this works out to be 343 meters per second. So that's the speed of sound in air at 20 degrees Celsius. Now let's find out what it is at 25 degrees Celsius. So first, we've got to find the Kelvin temperature. So it's 25 plus 273. So it's a little bit higher. It's going to be 298 Kelvin. So everything's going to be the same, except the new temperature. So let's go ahead and plug this in. So this is going to be 346 meters per second. So as we could see, as the temperature goes up, the speed of sound increases in air. Now there's another simple equation that relates temperature and the speed of sound. And here it is. The speed of sound in air is approximately 331 meters per second plus 0.6 times T, where T is in Celsius. So at 20 degrees Celsius, it's approximately 331 plus 0.6 times 20. And so this will give you 343 meters per second. And let's say if we wish to calculate the speed of sound at 25 degrees Celsius. It's going to be 331 plus 0.6 times 25. And that works out to be 346 meters per second. And so that's a simple equation that you could use if you want to find the speed of sound at 20 degrees or 25 degrees Celsius. Now let's review what we've covered. So we saw that the speed of sound in a solid is greater than the speed of sound in a liquid, which is greater than the speed of sound in air or in a gas. In the case of steel, we estimated that the speed of sound was about 5,000 meters per second. In the case of liquid water, the estimate was roughly around 1480 meters per second. And the speed of sound in air at 20 degrees Celsius was 343 meters per second. So as you can see, sound travels a lot faster in a solid than it does in a liquid or in air. So keep that in mind. The speed of sound is faster in a solid, but it's slower in air. Now what about in a vacuum, such as empty space? What's the speed of sound? It turns out that there is no sound in space. Sound is basically a pressure wave, and it has to travel through matter. That is through a solid, through a liquid, or through air molecules. But since space doesn't have any air molecules, there's no sound in space. Now we said that the speed of sound in steel is the square root of Young's modulus divided by the density. So for materials with a very high elastic modulus, or the Young modulus, as that increases, the speed of sound increases. As the density of the material increases, the speed of sound decreases. For liquids, the speed of sound depends on the bulk modulus and the density. So as the same case with uh, a solid, if the density of a fluid increases, the speed of sound decreases. However, if the bulk modulus of the liquid increases, the speed of sound will increase since that's on the top. Now, in the case of air, where we had this equation, 
the speed of sound increases with temperature. So whenever you increase the temperature of air, sound can travel faster in air. And it's inversely related to the molar mass of air. So as the molar mass of a gas increases, the speed decreases. So those are some things that you want to keep in mind.